Welcome fellow Stardust. Are you ready for a scare? I see you've come back for more. If you're new here, buckle up. And thank you for joining me today. For this video, I'll be giving you 10 fun facts about Barry Sonnenfeld's The Addams Family Movies, Addams Family and Addams Family Values as part of My Christina Ricci Month, the films that breathed new life into the characters created by Charles Addams in 1938. For my review of these films, check back on Monday. For now, here is a brief summary of each film and a look at some trivia. Spoilers are ahead. In the first film, we begin with Gomez lamenting over his long-lost brother, Fester, who has been missing for 25 years after a feud they had over Fester's ability to woo any woman. Gomez's lawyer, Tully, a con artist, tries to steal the Adams' fortune in order to pay his debt to a loan shark, Abigail. Because Abigail's adoptive son, Gordon, looks a lot like Fester, Tully thinks he can convince the Adamses that he's their long-lost relative, and in turn, gain access to their fortune. But after some doubt here and there, it turns out that Gordon is in fact Fester and was found by Abigail in the Bermuda Triangle 25 years ago and had suffered from amnesia. The film ends with Morticia announcing to Gomez that she will be having another baby. The second film opens with everyone hanging out at home when Morticia goes into labor and gives birth to Pubert. Because Wednesday and Pugsley think one of them will now be killed, they try numerous times to kill Pubert, prompting Gomez and Morticia to hire a nanny, Debbie. However, Debbie is a homicidal maniac who seduces wealthy men and murders them to inherit their fortune. Although she was successful at sending the kids off to summer camp so she could seduce Fester without Wednesday meddling, she was unsuccessful at murdering him. In her final attempt to kill Fester, she sets out to electrocute him, along with his entire family. But Pubert saves the day by reversing the electrical shock, turning Debbie into ash. 10. The idea to make the first film. The idea to bring these characters back to life came during a car ride after a movie screening. The van was filled with industry execs, including Tom Sharek and Fox's head of production, Scott Rudin. Tom's son began whistling the Addams Family theme song, and soon everyone began singing the entire song, word for word. The next day, Scott Rudin pitched to Fox execs, who were extremely excited about the idea, and gave him the green light. After the box office success of the Addams Family, Scott would go on to produce Adam's Family Values. Before the 1991 film, there had only been the original live-action series in the 60s that ran for two seasons, and an animated series from 1972 that was on air for only one season. Soon after the release of the films, another live-action and animated series were born. The animated series was on for two seasons and the live-action show had one season, but there were 65 episodes. There was also Adam's Family Reunion, unrelated to the two previous films, and the animated films, The Adam's Family and The Adam's Family 2. And in 2022, we're getting yet another live action series, except this time all the focus will be on Wednesday. Fittingly, the series will be called Wednesday, and it will follow Wednesday as she quote, attempts to master her psychic powers, stop a monstrous killing spree of the town's citizens, and solve the supernatural mystery that affected her family 25 years ago, all while navigating her new relationships. End quote. Jenna Ortega from the series You and the new Scream movie will be playing Wednesday, which is a choice that I approve of. 9. Getting the property rights wasn't easy. Even though Scott Rudin got the green light to produce the film, the project remained in limbo for a while because of issues concerning the rights of the material. Originally, Orion Pictures owned all the rights to the Addams Family and didn't want to sell them because they had plans of producing a rebooted television series. Also, some of the property rights were owned by Charles Addams' widow, who eventually sold those rights to Orion Pictures, giving them the full rights. When Scott got the idea for the movie, he was at a 
production at Fox, but when the ownership of the rights was finally settled, he went off on his own and produced the movie with Orion Pictures. However, because of some financial woes that I'll explain more in my next point, Orion Pictures ended up being bought out by MGM, who now owns the foreign distribution rights of the Addams Family. After that, Paramount, who already owned the domestic distribution rights before MGM purchased Orion, bought the rights to the film and finished production and produced the sequel. 8. Crazy Box Office Numbers the original budget for the film was $25 million, and the script was written by Caroline Thompson and Larry Wilson, who wrote Edward Scissorhands and Beetlejuice respectively. However, the script went through extensive rewrites by various writers while the movie was being filmed. One of the writers who had his hand in the rewrites was Paul Rednick, who wrote Sister Act and then went on to write Adam's Family Values. In my review that will be released on Monday, I mentioned that Values has a more comedic feel than the first one, even though both films are definitely horror comedies. But Values has that typical formulaic feel that totally works for these types of movies. The rewrites cost Orion an extra $5 million, making their new budget $30 million, which caused great concern for Orion, who was already struggling financially because of previous flops at the box office. Even though they had success with Silence of the Lambs and Dances with Wolves, their flops and going over budget with the Addams Family movie put them in a tough spot. With Steven Spielberg's hook to be released around the same time as the Addams Family movie, they feared they had another box office flop on their hands and scurried to sell in order to avoid any more losses. It's too bad that they didn't have more faith in the film because it went on to earn $113 million domestically and $78 million internationally for a total of $191.5 million. That's a $161 million profit. These numbers are mind-blowing, especially considering the reception of the film. People showed more love for Adam's Family Values, and even today, it gets more credit and seems to have a bigger cult following than the first film. However, the box office numbers for Values are a bit of a flop compared to its predecessor. The budget was $47 million, $17 million more than the previous film, but only made $40 $48.9 million, barely bringing in a profit. 7. The films are not directed by Tim Burton. Many people think of Tim Burton when they think of the Addams Family movies because of its very unique visual style. However, Tim Burton actually turned down the offer to direct the film because he was already working on the film Batman Returns. The films were actually directed by first-time director Barry Sonnenfeld. He was a successful cinematographer who had shot Misery, When Harry Met Sally, Throw Mama from the Train, Raising Arizona, and a bunch of other films. After his successful directorial debut, he went on to direct films like The Men in Black Films, Wild Wild West, Get Shorty, and so many more. And while on set, he dealt with many shortcomings. The first cinematographer he had, Owen Roisman, quit working on the project to go work on another film. Guess he thought Adam's family wasn't gonna be and looking at his IMDb, he didn't get much work after that. Maybe word got out that he was a flake who would jump ship at the next shiny thing. The other film he went to go work on was either Grand Canyon that was released that same year, which had an all-star cast, or Wyatt Earp that was released in 1994. Was it worth it, Owen? Nope. After that, Gail Tattersall was hired as the director of photography, but was soon rushed to the hospital because of a severe sinus infection and was unable to return to set. Already far into production and wanting no more delays, Barry decided to get behind the camera himself. However, they would be met with another delay when Raul Julia's blood vessel in his eye burst and they were forced to shoot around him until he was able to be in front of the camera again. Sadly, Raul Julia would die of stomach cancer after the release of Values, preventing Barry from making more Adams movies. Angelica Houston recalls Raul's health declining right before her eyes on set as he was weak and could hardly eat. 
1996, the films were shot in the same studio as the original series. The films were shot at Stage 3 8 at Hollywood Center Studios in Los Angeles, formerly known as General Service Studios. This is also where the television series from the 60s was shot, and the exterior of the house was built for $100,000. 5. Grandmama and Fester Switched Families In the series and cartoon, Grandmama is actually Gomez's mother, whose name is Adora Adams, but in the films, they had her be Morticia's mother instead, and named her Esmeralda Frump. In the series, Morticia's mother's name was Hester Frump, so they decided to keep the same last name. Also, Fester was originally the brother of Morticia's mother, who didn't have a surname. But for the films, he became the brother of Gomez instead, and given the last name of Adams. 4. Michael Jackson was booted from the project for the first movie, MC Hammer wrote and performed Adam's Groove, which was the main theme for the film. They even created a music video that the entire family made an appearance in. Unfortunately, it won a Razzie Award for Worst Original Song. But hey, it's catchy. For values, Michael Jackson was set to write a song for the film's soundtrack, and they were going to promote it with another music video. Once completed, the filmmakers were faced with contractual difficulties as well as child molestation allegations against Michael Jackson. The song is called Is It Scary? and he ended up using it in his short film Ghosts from 1996. And man, it's a great song that would have been just perfect for values. And they really put salt on the wound during a scene at Camp Chippewa. When Wednesday and Pugsley are in the Harmony Hut, Joel walks in and sees a Michael Jackson poster and screams as though he's afraid for his life. 3. Christina Ricci Fought for Fester Producer Scott Rudin and director Barry Sonnenfeld were on the fence about whether or not to have Fester be an imposter. The actors, however, felt really strongly about Fester actually being Gomez's long-lost brother. So the cast rallied two weeks before shooting began and voted to have Christina Ricci be the spokesperson for the group and had her beg and plead with Scott and Barry to make Fester Gomez's biological brother. In an interview, Scott recalls that Christopher Lloyd, who plays Fester, was the only one who didn't care about whether or not he was an imposter. Both Scott and Barry agree that it was the best decision. 2. The Origin of Wednesday's Name I've always wondered how Charles came up with Wednesday's name. It always seemed a bit too chipper for me. But it comes from an old nursery rhyme. This is how it goes. Monday's child is fair of face. Tuesday's child is full of grace. Wednesday's child is full of woe. Thursday's child has far to go. Friday's child is loving and giving. Saturday's child works hard for a living. And the child born on the Sabbath day is bonny and blithe, good and gay. Nursery rhymes have always been a bit creepy to me because so many have dark undertones. Take Ring Around the Rosie, for example. This fortune-telling nursery rhyme for children was to help them remember days of the week as well as tell a child's character based on the day of the week they were born. With Wednesday being the only negative day, it's saddening to know that there were some children who were bummed about being born on a Wednesday. 1. Christina Ricci came up with her sleeping position. In an interview, Angelica Houston explains that Christina Ricci is the one who came up with her sleeping position, with her arms folded across her chest. Christina likes to give all the credit to the writers and filmmakers for the success of Wednesday Addams, but it was little things like this that made the role hers. Nobody else could have played Wednesday quite like Christina. For one more fun fact about Christina, check back on Monday for my review. I'll leave a timestamp in the description box. Well, there you have it, folks. My 10 fun facts about Barry Sonnenfeld's Adams Family movies. Again, be sure to check back on Monday for my review of both films. Typically, the review would be uploaded the next day, but tomorrow I'll be uploading my on-the-fly review of the new Scream movie. This will be my first review done outside of the studio, so we'll see how that goes. Well, I hope I see you next time, fellow Stardust. Peace.